In today's video, I'm sharing 10 fun and easy Valentine's activities for toddlers and preschoolers. Not only will these activities support your child's development, but they're super simple to set up and will keep your kids entertained while they learn through play. Make sure you stick around for the whole video because I'll be sharing how to modify these activities to fit your child's readiness level. First up, we have our fine motor Valentine's activities. Fine motor skills have to do with the smaller muscle groups in the body, like hands and fingers. This fine motor clothespin clip activity is perfect for strengthening those little hands and fingers. Start by cutting some larger hearts out of different colored cardstock. If you don't have cardstock, you can use construction paper and laminate it or paint some cardboard, but you're going to want the heart to be stiff enough to hold the clothespin. Side note, if you don't have a laminator, I highly suggest picking one up. They actually have really affordable ones for home use. I'll leave a link to a great one in the description box, but they really come in handy for keeping activities strong and protected. And you can use them for other things too, like for photos or to preserve your child's artwork. So it's definitely a great idea. Anyway, after you're done prepping your larger hearts, cut out some small hearts in matching colors. You're going to want these to be small enough to secure to the top of your clothespins. Tape or glue the hearts onto the top of your clothespins and have your child clip the clothespins to the matching color heart. One, two. Let's see. What one do you want to do next? Yellow. You want to do yellow? Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. Yellow. This yellow. I love yellow. <laughs> yellow is my favorite color. Oh, yellow and blue? You have been liking yellow more lately. Great job. If your child is on the younger side, they may need a little help clipping the clothespins if they haven't yet developed the finger strength to do so. If your child needs more of a challenge, you can turn this into a letter or number recognition activity. So you just simply write the uppercase letters or a numeral on one set of hearts and lowercase letters or the corresponding number of dots on the other set. Our next Valentine's fine motor activity is heart hole punching. I love these little hole punchers from Amazon. They are really easy to punch and they're great for little hands. So I definitely recommend them for toddlers and preschoolers. But if your child does well with a regular hole punch, then by all means, go ahead and use that. But I will link this little one down in the description box below if you wanna pick one up. To prep this activity, start by cutting out some hearts out of construction paper, and then have your child use a hole punch to just punch holes all over the heart. To make this activity a little more challenging, you can draw a line around the outside of the heart and have your child try and punch holes along the line. You can also go ahead and extend this even further by having your child try and thread a piece of string or yarn through the holes to create a lacing activity. Now our gross motor Valentine's activities, which have to do with the larger muscle groups of the body, like arms, legs, and torso. Our first activity is super cute and easy. I used to do this in my kindergarten class after reading the book, The Day It Rained Hearts, which I will leave a link for down in the description box below. The first thing you're going to want to do is cut out some medium sized hearts and then you simply just throw them in the air and have your child try and catch them. To extend this activity, you can write letters, numbers, or even sight words on the hearts to turn this into a recognition game for your toddler or preschooler. If you're doing this version, simply have your child look at the hearts after they catch them and name whatever is on the heart. Next up for gross motor activities, we have a Valentine's Day scavenger hunt. I absolutely love scavenger hunts. I just think they are such a great way to get kids up and moving around. I actually created this one that you can snag as a dollar deal from my store, which I will link down in the description box, or you can simply create your own. You can choose to do this in a variety of ways, like hiding different objects that are red or pink around your house for your child to find, or you can cut out some hearts out of construction paper again and have your child go around the house to find them. My Valentine's scavenger hunt does come with an optional recording sheet so your toddler or preschooler can check off their objects as they find them and keep track of what they need to look for. Coming up next, we have some Valentine's sensory activities. Sensory activities are so beneficial for learning and exploring, especially in the early years. This glitter slime recipe is a great sensory experience and super easy to make. I love it because it's really easy to work with and it's not super goopy or anything, so it's great for keeping this sensory activity 
on the neater side. For the base, you're going to need either a six ounce bottle of glitter glue in the color of your choice or clear glue and some food coloring. Empty the glue and food coloring if you're using it into a medium sized bowl and stir in half a tablespoon of baking soda and mix it thoroughly with the glue. After the baking soda and glue are mixed together, add one and a half tablespoons of contact lens solution. Really important, you wanna make sure this contains boric acid or this recipe won't work correctly. Next, you're going to knead the mixture with both of your hands until it's fully formed and then let the phone begin. Feel free to also add extra glitter or confetti to the slime or whatever Valentine themed things you would like. Valentine soup is so fun. I took these foam hearts that I grabbed from Amazon and I threw them in our sensory bin with a few drops of food coloring, some water and glitter, and then gave my son Luke some utensils to cook up his soup. I even threw in some bowls and spoons for some imaginary play and it was awesome. This is a bowl. Oh, thank you. This mushroom. That looks delicious. Can I eat with you? You can do this in any size container that you'd like. I love our Ikea flea set table for any kind of sensory activities like this. To keep the mess at bay, I usually lay down a tablecloth on the floor and then throw some kind of towels over it as well. It also helps to go over whatever rules you have when it comes to sensory play before starting. Mine are usually no eating, no throwing. Try your best to keep everything in the bin. Keep it simple. Cognitive development has to do with how your child thinks, explores, and figures things out in the world around them. We have two cognitive Valentine's themed activities today. The first being a really cute and simple science experiment. For this experiment, you're going to need some of those candy conversation hearts, some clear soda and a mason jar, or clear glass or plastic cup. Pour the soda into the cup and have your child drop a handful of candy hearts into the soda, then wait for a second to watch them dance. If your child's a little older, ask them what they're observing or what they're seeing happening. You can point out how the bubbles stick to the hearts and cause them to float to the top. And then once they pop, the hearts sink to the bottom. It's such a cute and simple way to get those little scientist brains working. Our next activity is great for practicing your little one's name. Don't worry if they don't know how to spell their name yet. This is a great activity to get them working on it. I decided to do this with butcher paper just to switch things up a bit, but you can just use a small piece of construction paper too. That's totally fine. Draw one heart for each letter in your child's name and then write the letters in the hearts. Cut out hearts about the same size from colored paper and do the same thing, one letter per heart. Have your child match the letters to the correct hearts. If your child already knows how to spell their name and needs more of a challenge, feel free to leave the letters off of the white paper and have them place the letters of their name in the correct order from memory. If your child does not yet know how to spell their name, walk them through this activity by pointing and saying each letter of their name before having them place the letters in the correct places. It is important to emphasize placing the letters in order from left to right so that your child begins to understand the basic concepts of reading and writing direction. Be sure to keep this activity so that you can revisit it as a quick name practice exercise. Remember that laminator I talked about before? Here's an example of when it would come in handy. I'll tell you a little secret. I've never been good at art. So I like to keep my art projects simple and sweet, which is just what these Valentine's crafts are. For our first art activity, you'll need some coffee filters, washable markers, and either a spray bottle with some water or a pipette with a cup of water. Cut the coffee filters into a heart shape before beginning, then have your child add some color to the coffee filters with their markers. Either have them spray the filters with a spray bottle or drop some water droplets onto the filters and watch their art magically transform. These cute cardboard tube heart stamps only require four things paint, some recycled cardboard tubes, some rubber bands, and paper. Bend the tubes into heart shapes and secure them with a rubber band before having your child dip the tubes into paint and stamp them onto the paper. Easy peasy. If you enjoyed these activities, then please give this video a thumbs up and let us know in the comments which one was your favorite. Make sure to subscribe for more parenting tips and fun educational activities for home. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.